Welcome to part 2 of Triple 157 Lecture 11. In this part of the lecture, we will talk about the symbol detection problem and hypothesis testing quickly. This is just a uh, fast this is a fast discussion here. Okay. So, first things first, how do we map the symbols to the bits? So, we've talked about in digital mod modulation, we talked about uh, we're taking L bits to map in to map into symbols. Okay. The combination of uh, different combinations of L bits will be mapped to different symbols in a constellation. But there's actually an optimal symbol to bit mapping that can be used to minimize the bit errors. And we call this the gray code mapping. The goal of the gray code mapping is that adjacent symbols must have only one bit difference. Okay, So that's the goal of gray code mapping. Uh, some examples of gray code mapping on your uh, PAM and your QAM is shown in the screen here. As you can see, adjacent symbols have different, uh, just one bit difference between them. Okay, so if you can examine here. So what's the advantage of that over other forms of mapping? When your uh, receiver, or your transmitter rather, transmits this symbol from your 16 QAM, and the receiver receives this displaced symbol, which is closer to 0100, 0, 0, this symbol right here, the receiver will think it's 0100 0, 0, instead of 0000. 0, 0, 0. Now, between the two, you only have one bit error. Okay, And that's the advantage of gray code mapping. If we use gray code mapping, we're sure that a symbol error corresponds to a single bit error. Okay? Most probably a single bit error, rather. So that's the most probable case. The displacement can go as far as this one. But there's more probability that the displacement is closer to the adjacent symbols. Okay? This is the more probable case compared to this. So the probability of this happening, this symbol being displaced very far, we assume it to be very to be negligible. So we're only considering an error that is uh, on the adjacent uh, symbol. Okay? So this is the case for most communication systems. Right? So there's only one bit error when there's an error in the modulation, the most probable case. And that's the, uh, the main advantage of gray code mapping. Okay. And if there's one bit error, there's less bit errors in the received signal, your receiver will be able, uh, will have more power to correct that error by using correction codes or uh, error correction techniques. And you learned about this way back in your uh, networks in weeks from weeks one to five. I can't recall which week. Anyway, so now let's move on to how the receiver demodulates it. So the, the goal of the detection, given R, an operation is carried out to determine the most probable M. And this is how hypothesis testing works. So an example of hypothesis testing is not your symbol detection problem, but rather when you try to answer a multiple choice question. Given the information, given the question, What's the most probable answer among the choices? Okay. So that's when you think about, hmm, maybe letter A has an 80% uh, probability that it's right. Then you have 20% probability that you're wrong. Okay. That's when you think about it. Okay. So that's an example of hypothesis testing. Another example of hypothesis testing is when you flip a coin. So before you start the experiment, you guess what type or what would be the output when you flip a coin? What would be the face that uh, that is uh, seen when you flip a coin? Okay. So when you flip a biased coin, you will say that uh, you will you will demodulate or detect more of the most most of the time the biased side of the coin. Okay. So this is directly tied to how we demodulate or how do we detect symbols. Okay, so I've already told you this, but the easiest uh, setup is the maximum likelihood uh, detection detection technique. Okay, so this is the maximum likelihood detection technique, where what you observe, use what you observe, and see what symbol is closest to that observation. Okay, so if we receive this symbol then the receiver will think it's S2 because this symbol is closest to the symbol S2. If we receive this symbol, 
the receiver will think or the receiver will decide that this is S3 since it's closest to S3. Okay. So, we're talking about closeness here. We're talking about distance. Okay. Since we have mapped the symbols in some geometric plane, we're able to quantify or use an expression to detect your uh, transmitted symbol based on your observation. Okay. And we're in, in this case, since it's we're just talking about the nearest symbol, then the receiver decides the symbol by minimizing what we call the distance function. So we are measuring the distance of the received symbol from a symbol m, s sub m, okay? and the s sub m that minimizes this distance is the output of your detector. Okay? So this is one big advantage of your uh, using your constellation maps. You will be able to visualize Okay, which of when when you're trying to demodulate it yourself, can you you're, you're able to visualize which symbol is sent based on the observation. Okay, just a note that this setup where your decision boundary is found in the middle between the two is only applicable for equiprobable symbols. Okay, so uh, you learn about this in information theory that equiprobable symbols are uh, the most probable case for most uh, signal sources. Okay, So it's a reasonable assumption that when we set up a demodulator and a modulator, we use, uh, we use the decision region that is the midpoint between two adjacent symbols to select your decision boundaries. Okay, So this is for equiprobable symbols. Now, if you have a biased transmitter, so let's say you have a constellation where one symbol has more probability of being transmitted, the decision rule is not as simple as a minimum distance problem. There's a mathematical formulation for this, but for this course, you don't need to know it. So an example would be this. If your transmitter produces more plus one for a 2ASK, if your transmitter produces more plus one, then the receiver will decide, okay, let's move the decision boundary to uh, further away from plus one. Since plus one has more chance of occurring, the receiver will guess that, okay, maybe the next one is plus one. Therefore, the, the symbol is transmitted. So this is the optimum boundary between the two, since plus one occurs more. And this is actually what happens in real life if you know let's say for a coin toss, if you know that the coin is biased towards heads, even before you toss the coin, you will answer heads more, more, more of the time compared to tails. Since you know that heads occurs more for this particular coin compared to tails. This is also true if you have a biased die. If you roll a die that is uh, always that always results into a 3, let's say, or most of the time it results into three, then even before you roll the die, you will say that the uh, result will be three. So it's similar to that. So if you have a bias transmitter, the way you set up the decision boundary will change. Okay. So this is how we demodulate your bias transmitter. Okay. So uh, other techniques can be used to, uh, like, we. If, if we have uh, a receiver that does not know this, maybe the receiver can adjust based on that. But that's already an advanced technique uh, that requires uh, that requires advanced algorithms. Okay, so if you already know that the, that the transmitter is biased, then you design the receiver in a way such that the decision boundary is also biased. It's closer to one symbol compared to the other. If it's equiprobable, you will see that the result of this distance, the, the decision boundary, if it's equiprobable, you will see that the decision boundary will be between the two adjacent symbols at the midpoint. Okay? So this is how we demodulate bias transmitters. Okay? And uh, this rule is called the maximum okay, a posteriori 
decision rule. Or we call it the map rule. Okay? What you saw from equiprobable symbols is a simplification of the map rule that becomes the maximum likelihood decision rule. Or ML rule as we call it, not mobile legends. Okay. It's ML rule, maximum likelihood. Okay. So just to summarize, we use gray code mapping to minimize the bit errors when detecting symbols. Okay. Using gray code mapping, we will be able to use more powerful error correction techniques in the higher layers of your communication system to further minimize the bit errors. Okay. The digital demodulator performs a special case of hypothesis testing to determine the most probable symbol transmitted. If you have an equiprobable uh, constellation, equiprobable symbols, then your uh, decision rule reduces to a minimum distance problem. Right? There's, a, there's actually a mathematical proof for this. But again, we won't dive that deep for this course. Okay? And finally, if we have biased transmitters, you'll have a more complicated detection algorithm. But you are sure that the decision boundary will be further from the biased symbol. Okay? So that's the end of this part of the lecture. The next part will be the longer, the longest part of all the four because we will be talking about how we'll analyze the bit error rate of the pulse amplitude modulation constellation. Okay? Only that, not the others because if you try to analyze that, it will be heavier in math. Okay? So we won't dive that deep. So thank you for listening and I'll see you next meeting.